Hello guys and girls, Raj here, back with another reInvent 2020 video. Uh, so this is a, like a dual purpose video. Uh, one, we are gonna go deep on how to integrate Fargate with API Gateway. And second, we are gonna go over this announcement, uh, which is Amplify CLI enables serverless container deployments using AWS Fargate. All right, let's get started. So one thing which is uh, special about this approach is uh, we will integrate Fargate tasks with API Gateway without a load balancer. So uh, generally when you expose your Fargate tasks to outside, you use a load balancer, but for this, uh, we will do without load balancer. So saves you some uh, cost and also it is more efficient. Uh, for those of you who are new to this channel, uh, my name is Raj. Uh, I'm a, a senior specialist solutions architect working at AWS. Uh, before joining AWS, I was a distinguished cloud architect at Verizon and I used to work in mainframe. Uh, so check out my other videos, how I switched my career from mainframe to AWS. I'm also a published Udemy plural site author and in my free time, I like to play video games. Uh, so in this video, we are going to go over the design flow and steps of integrating Fargate with API. And then we are gonna go into where does Amplify come into the picture? And as always, uh, we'll end with a demo and show you guys and girls how it works end to end. Uh, by the end of this video, you should be able to have a API endpoint calling your Fargate tasks uh, running within VPC. So, all right, so let's start with the design flow and the steps. So before we dive deep into this uh, design, so if you have no idea about what is Fargate and how to uh, use it, I highly recommend watching my Fargate basics video with demo. I'll give a link up top and after you watch it, then I recommend watching this. So first we have our ECS Fargate task, uh, which is running your application. And to have a Fargate task, you have to have a, uh, your application containerized, right? So you have to store your container in a, a repository uh, such as Amazon Elastic Container Registry. And then you have a ECS service uh, on top of this Fargate task. So it's a little confusing. This ECS service is not exactly same as Kubernetes service. Uh, this ECS service makes sure that if you say, hey, I want to run uh, two copies of this task. So if, if one copy goes down, this ECS service will make sure that it will bring up another task to maintain the number of desired tasks. And you can integrate a load balancer with a service. So this is the confusing part. Like in Kubernetes, uh, this replica things is handled by replica set. And uh, the Kubernetes service can actually create a load balancer and that's actually the service and you expose the pods. But ECS service does not create a load balancer. And all this is running within a VPC private subnet. That's what is recommended, right? For real world applications. So ideally you should not be able to access uh, the ECS Fargate task directly using the IP address uh, from outside world. Now to expose this, to an API, so we'll have an API gateway. However, this ECS service is running within a VPC private subnet. So API gateway, like a regular API gateway cannot really reach it. Uh, so for that, we use a VPC link. Uh, so VPC link is a set of elastic network interfaces in the VPC assigned to and managed by API gateway so that API Gateway can talk privately with other resources in the VPC. So this way, Amazon ECS services can be launched in private subnets and don't need public IP. Note that with this approach, you do not need to provision any load balancer. Uh, before this enhancement, if you have to integrate your API uh, with uh, AWS resources running within private subnet of a VPC, you needed to um, create a private link, uh, which involves creating load balancers. However, with this approach, you do not need to create any load balancer. But there is one more caveat. Uh, so for service discovery uh, of these containerized Fargate tasks, API Gateway 
needs a way to find the IP address and ports of the backend services so that it can reach to those uh, tasks in the VPC. So to do that, we have AWS Cloud Map. You enable this on the Amazon ECS services and then ECS performs periodic health checks on tasks in Amazon ECS services and registers the healthy tasks to the respective AWS Cloud Map service. And if everything is good, and then AWS Cloud Map has the DNS mapping uh, for these Fargate tasks. So API Gateway using VPC link, link uh, can query the Cloud Map, finds the IP address port of Fargate tasks and reach out to them. All right, so at this point, the backend is all hooked up. Uh, so you, a user or an application running on, let's say Amazon EC2, can invoke this API endpoint and reach the Fargate task. So now here comes the amplify part. So let's say you want to set all this up. So there are a lot of steps involved here, as you can see, like you have to set up the API gateway, a VPC link, service, private VPC, if you want to uh, deploy it in a new VPC, you have to make sure it's private subnet, uh, you have to create the ECR, the container registry, the Fargate, cloud map. So if you want to codify this in CloudFormation, it's a lot, right? So that's where AWS Amplify comes in. So it's a framework which can deploy all this with few clicks. Amplify that is not like a separate service creating separate stuff. Like it's not like a database. It's not like an API itself. It's just a framework which does all this orchestration for you, right? Make, makes your life easier. So it will be comparable to, let's say, serverless framework, uh, which can create a Lambda, API Gateway, a Cognito, security, all that stuff. Similarly, Amplify, one of the feature of the Amplify will be, it can hook up this Fargate, ECS, VPC link, API gateway, all these components in one click. And the reinvent change is that it did not used to support Fargate before. Like you could have deployed a Lambda and API gateway with Amplify, uh, but you could not do Fargate with API gateway with Amplify before. Now with Amplify, uh, with this reinvent announcement, you can do that. So, all right. so. Uh, let's just jump in and do a demo and then we'll see how it works in action. So for this demo, I'm using this blog post because there are some CLI commands that you need to run. As you can see, this just came out brand new uh, during reInvent 2020. So we're going to run all these commands. So let me, I don't want to go over uh, running all these commands one by one, uh, but I'm going to go over a couple of things that's noteworthy. All right, I'm just uh, following the blog and pasting the commands of installing Amplify, uh, creating a directory, and then Amplify in it. So the first interesting command is this Amplify uh, configure project. And you can see uh, it's now asking, do you want to enable container-based deployments? Uh, so I said yes, because Fargate is container-based deployment. And the next important thing is Amplify add API. So I'm selecting which service would you like to use? So I'm selecting API Gateway plus AWS Fargate. This option is added with reInvent 2020. So for this uh, Express template, uh, AWS gives you a program which returns a number which is random. Uh, it also gives you a sample Docker file to Dockerize that program and create a container image. If you want, once you do Amplify Add API, you can go to the directory and look up this index.js and study the program. All right, and finally, I'm just uh, running Amplify Push and that would submit a bunch of cloud formations and get my services deployed. And finally, it will give us a REST API endpoint. Okay, so that did a lot of stuff, but how could you tell what stuff did Amplify do? So as always, you go to a trusty CloudFormation, so anything AWS deploys, you can bet 99.9% .9 of time that it's doing so using CloudFormation. So if I go to CloudFormation, uh, you can see there are three stacks 
that get that got deployed with my uh, amplify commands. Uh, so if I click this, these are the three stack. And then if I go to resources, you can see it created a bunch of stuff. I am role uh, and this one and the next one, VPC, it created a new VPC, ECS cluster, a route table, internet gateway, subnet association, bunch of stuff. And then API gateway, V2 integrations, uh, code build project. So basically it created a ECR as well somewhere. Uh, okay, so Lambda function to check the code pipeline and stuff. So Amplify not only just deploys it one time, it also monitors. If you change the code, it will automatically trigger this whole pipeline and redeploy it. So that's also another plus. So now uh, let's go to API Gateway and the ECS. So, okay, so I'm in API Gateway. You can see Amplify deployed uh, this API. If I click this, I go to integrations, click default. So you can see this has created this VPC link as we discussed in the design. And if I open this VPC link, so this is linked to that VPC that it created. So now let's go to ECS and see if we can find the cloud map. So I'm okay, I'm in ECS. There's one service running and one uh, running tasks. And this is of type Fargate, which is good. Uh, let's click this. So this is the service. So let's click the service. Okay, network access within the VPC. So here we go, service discovery so to use cloud map with ecs you have to enable service discovery so amplify does that for you and this is the dns record type uh, with the port and then it returns the ip address as well so if we go to cloud map there should be a cloud map entry as well okay aws cloud map this is a relatively newer service this feature is actually new as well this is uh, this came out in October, the integration between API Gateway and ECS Fargate. So here we go. There is a cloud map. So Amplify created a cloud map. So this is the cloud map. This should point to that ECS. So here we go. ECS service name. So this cloud map is pointing to that ECS service name that got created and the task definition. Okay, and it's doing uh, some health check and the initial status is healthy. All right, and then if I go to ECR, you can see that Amplify also created this uh, container. So the advantage is now you have this framework, so it's a little bit easier for you. You can go check out the codes and then uh, change it and then retweak it for your project. Okay, so at this point, if we invoke this API URL, you can grab it uh, from the terminal uh, that Amplify gave you after pushing all the changes, or you can simply go to API Gateway, the Amplify API, and uh, get this invoke URL. So copy this, open a new tab, paste this, press enter. Here you go, it's returning a random number. All right, so this is how uh, we bring together this API Gateway with Fargate without load balancer flow and the Amplify uh, reInvent announcement. However, there is a food for thought for you guys and girls. In real world, you do not invoke API like that. Like you do not invoke the API using the regular raw URL. In real world, you invoke the API using a custom domain such as uh, like you invoke www.example.com slash fetch slash update, something like that. Because uh, if you just invoke API with that raw URL like we did, if you change anything, the URL will change and then the calling application will end up changing every time there is a change in the backend. Uh, so to know how to do custom domain with API, so that's another deep dive. So I have another video. I'll give a link up top, so check that out. So that's also a pretty uh, used feature in real world, but not so much used in your practice projects. So all right, uh, that's the video. If you guys and girls found this video useful, uh, please subscribe. I'm trying to get to 10,000 magical number of subscribers. I have a bunch of videos on interviewing, how to switch your career to cloud, and a bunch of technical deep dives. With that being said, 
Uh, all of you guys and girls have a Merry Christmas and I will see you guys and girls in the next video. Bye.